Oh, I think he deserves something better than that. I think your Savior deserves something better than that. The one who died for you in the cross deserves something better than that. Oh, we, let me tell you something. Everybody who's here in this place. Some of us have been here since the morning. Some of us have been here since 9 o'clock. That doesn't mean if we stay all three services, that doesn't mean that at the end we should just give the rest to God. Doesn't matter if we're tired. We don't consist. Well, I don't consist on my own strength. I consist on His strength. Hallelujah. I am fertilized by His power. It's not mine. Because let me tell you something, I'm weak. But, but with Him, with God, anything is possible. Right now, I want you to give everything to the Lord right now. Just like Maria gave everything to Him. Everybody thought bad of her. Everybody thought, oh, she's a prostitute. She's this, she's that. It doesn't matter. God doesn't care who you were. He just cares of what you're going to bring to Him. We're supposed to right now, right now, I want you to close your eyes. Oh, I feel His presence here in this place. I don't know if you feel it tonight, but I feel His presence here tonight. And I feel that He's going to do something incredible tonight. I don't know if you believe it, but I do believe it tonight. Oh, come on. We have to stop sleeping, church. We have to stop playing, church. I don't know if you remember the preaching of Brother Andrew that was here two months ago. I don't know if you remember his preaching, but he said that we're playing on the shores. He says we're playing church. We have to get serious. The time of God is coming. You have to examine yourself right now. If God would come in this moment, how's your relationship with God? You think you would be saved? I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about that right now. If God comes for his people tonight, will you be one of them? Or will you stay? Because God offers the eternal. God offers eternal life and salvation while the world offers condemnation. You have to think, if God comes for His people, how is your relationship with God right now? Is your relationship strong? Right now, let's pray. Because I think we need some prayer. I think we need some prayer. Hallelujah. We need something to happen tonight. We need something to happen tonight. We need to tell God right now, God, descend from your throne right now. Descend, Jesus Christ, from your throne and pour down your glory upon this place. Because we right now, all oh, some of us have spiritual diseases. That's what I'm going to preach about tonight. Spiritual diseases that interrupt the relationship between us and God. Disease is the devil puts so we can be lazy. So we can be, we can be lazy in the things of God. So we stop reading the Bible. So we stop praying. So we get lazy to come to church. Well, that's going to stop tonight because the healer is here tonight. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, oh, Jesus Christ. I want everybody to put your hands up right now. Oh, there's healing tonight. Jesus is here tonight. I don't know if you believe it, but I feel him tonight. Hallelujah. I don't know if you're feeling him tonight. Oh, I don't know if you're insensitive. I don't know if you lost all your sensibility, but I still have it and I still feel him. I still feel him. I still feel him in my heart. He's moving. Hallelujah. He wants to tell his people, I am the healer. He wants to tell his people, oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus Christ, we're here. We're here right now. Oh, come on, let's pray, youth. Let's pray, youth. Let's pray, youth. We have not come to this hour to play church. We have not come to this hour to do just some other service. No, we have to give God everything we have. Oh, it doesn't matter if we're weary. It doesn't matter if we're tired. That's the devil. That's the devil putting things in your mind that you want to go home, that you're tired, that you're lazy. Right now, I declare the devil out of our lives in the name of Jesus. I declare the devil be under our feet in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Come on, youth. Oh, we need a revival in this place. Just like Sister Charlie Bell. Oh, she said we need a revival in this place. Yes, we do need a revival in this place. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. I know you don't deserve this, Lord. I know you don't deserve this, Lord. I know you don't deserve this, Lord. Oh, Jesus Christ, right now here. Oh, we're here in your presence, Lord. Oh, may you move inside of us, Jesus. May you move in this congregation right now. May you move in this prayer. May you move in this service. Hallelujah. Because you are here tonight. Oh, yes, 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 Lord. Give him another round of applause. Hallelujah. can take a seat. It's kind of hot in here, isn't it? It's okay, brother. Uh, Like I already said, I'm going to be preaching of the four spiritual diseases. Four spiritual diseases that the devil puts in a believer so you may stumble, so you become lazy for the stuff of God. I want you to open your, now you can stand on your feet. I want you to open your Bibles. It's only two verses. Matthew 4, 23 and 24. Keep your Bibles open because we're going to be, we're going to be with the Bible the whole night. Hallelujah. 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 Something amazing is going to happen tonight. Oh, yes, yes. I feel him, I feel him. I'm shaking because his presence is here tonight. We must fear the Lord, hallelujah. We must fear him. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Matthew 4, 23. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 4, 23 and 24. I'm going to read them. It says we read this in the name of Jesus. Jesus was going all over Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Number 24 says, Then the news about him spread throughout Syria. So they brought to him all those who were afflicted, those suffering from various diseases and intense pains, the demon possessed, the epileptics and the paralytics, and he healed them. And he healed them. He healed the afflicted. He healed those suffering from various diseases. He healed those suffering from intense pains. He healed the demon possessed. He healed the epileptics. I don't know if you're hearing me right now. He healed the paralytics. I want you to... Yes. Oh, come on. You can give him something better than that. lift your hands we're gonna we're gonna pray so that God can use me and and so this word can penetrate penetrate through every every heart every life here in this place right now let's pray Jesus Christ right now this is your people right now oh Lord I'm right here Jesus please use me anoint me Jesus Christ with your spirit right now I feel you in this place Lord I feel your presence in this place I feel your spirit in this place Jesus Christ and right now I'm asking you Lord please prepare Jesus Christ this congregation hallelujah for what they're gonna hear tonight Jesus Christ oh because sometimes we come here with problems but right now I want you Lord to take away each distraction Jesus Christ oh so we may not think what's gonna happen tomorrow but we focus on what is now hallelujah oh please lord use me and make this jesus christ and descend from your throne hallelujah and pour down your glory upon this place amen 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 amen. hallelujah you may take a seat be comfortable the four spiritual diseases Not only in this world are there diseases or sicknesses in the flesh, but also in the spirit. Their objective is to interrupt the relationship between the believer and God. 
to be a barrier between you and the flowing of his presence in your life. Each disease has its different purpose and its different symptom. It makes obstacles for you not to come to church. It makes excuses for you not to connect with God spiritually. The devil uses spiritual diseases to make the believer weary and tired to do things that are useful for their Christian life. The disease continues to become worse until you have no emotions for the things of God and your spirit dies. You stop coming to church. You stop reading the Bible. You stop praying to God. The spiritual disease can only be healed through Jesus. I think I need to say that again. The spiritual disease can only be healed through Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Even in church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Even in, in church, there are people with spiritual diseases, with, with, with a spiritual disease or spiritual diseases. Tonight, we are going to look into the four spiritual diseases of a believer and how to be healed by the power of Jesus. Amen? So we're going to see the four spiritual diseases, and it's, all of them are in the, uh, the Gospels. And like I said, a spiritual disease is mostly uh, something that the devil puts uh, that interrupts the relationship between you and God. Uh, there, are, there are four spiritual diseases, and each have their different symptoms, each have their different uh, things, their different purposes. Hallelujah. The first two are the disease of speechless and deafness. The disease of speechless is when you can't speak the word of God and you're embarrassed of the gospel of God when you're afraid to preach or to announce the good news to the world. The second disease is the disease of deafness. It's when you don't hear God's calling or, uh, or what God is trying to tell you. When you refuse to listen to leaders or have a spirit of rebellion towards them. Or when you get distracted easily in the preaching and can't concentrate on what God wants to tell you. When you don't receive a word of advice from a person who is spiritually mature. I want you to open your Bibles to Mark 9.17. We're going to read from number 17 to number 29. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Mark 9.17. We're going to read from number 17 to number 29. Hallelujah. I'm going to read it, and uh, you just follow with your eyes. And it says, He replied to them, You unbelieving generation, how long will I, will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? With you, bring him to me. So they brought him to him. When the spirit saw him, it immediately convulsed the boy. He fell to the ground, rolled over, foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening to him? Jesus asked his father. From a childhood, he said. And many times it has thrown him into fire or water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Then Jesus said to him, if you can, everything is possible to the one who believes. Immediately the father of the boy cried out, I do believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that, a crowd was rapidly coming together. He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Then it came out, shrieking and convulsing him. Violently, the boy became like a corpse, so that many said, He's dead. But Jesus, taking him by the hand, raised him. He stood up, and after he went into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why can we drive it out? And he told them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Amen. So we have a father, concerned father. He has a, 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 a demon-possessed boy that has a spirit of death 
and, and mute. He can't speak. He can't listen. So then the father first goes to the disciples. Disciples couldn't drive him out. And that's why God says, You unbelieving generation, how long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring him to me. Now this boy, he had a mute and a deaf spirit. Now these are two of the diseases that can happen to a believer, but not in the flesh, in the spirit. I already explained what those two diseases are. But what Jesus says at the end is how to cure it. He says, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. That's the only way you can, you can drive out that spirit of deafness. If you're afraid to go out there and preach the word of God, you have a spirit of speechless, of, of mute, because you are afraid of the gospel. What does Romans 1.16 says? Romans 1.16 says, well, I will not be afraid of the gospel because it is power of God. If you are afraid of the gospel, if your friends at school do not know that you are Christian and you haven't told them yet, you have a spirit of speechless. You can't speak the word of God. You are embarrassed of the gospel and of what you believe in. Now, a, sp now a, a, a disease of deafness, a disease of deafness is when you can't hear what God is trying to tell you. You can't hear God's call. What God is trying to tell you to do, you can't hear it. You can't pay attention in the, in, in the services when the preaching is going. You can't pay attention. You get distracted easily. You can't hear what God is trying to tell you. That's the spirit of deafness. And the only way you can cure that, the, the only way you can cure the disease is with prayer and with fasting. Those are the first two diseases right there off the bat. First two diseases, how you can cure them. Praying and fasting. The next disease is the third disease, and it's the disease of paralysis. The disease of paralysis is when you're lazy and inactive when it comes to the stuff of God. When you get weary by the chores of this world, and when, God, when God's time comes, we, can be, we become tired to do what is necessary for spiritual growth. It's when you skip church for the mall. It's when you skip church for something else. It's when you skip reading the Bible for something else. It's when you skip prayer for doing something else. That's the disease of paralysis. When a brother tells you, brother, let's go evangelize, or a sister, let's go evangelize, and you say, no, I'm tired. I'm too tired. I've done too much today. I've done, I've done too much. That's the disease of paralysis. You don't want to do what God is asking you to do. You don't want to do the things that God wants you to do. That's the disease of paralysis. You don't want to do the stuff of God. When God asks you to do something, you stay still and you do it your way. You don't do it God's way. That's the disease of paralysis. And you can open your Bibles to Matthew 8, 5 to 13. S disease. Now we have the three diseases. Disease of what? Speechless. The disease of what? Deafness. deafness. And the disease of? Paralysis. How do you cure the disease of speechless and deafness? Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. So Matthew, 5, Matthew 8, 5 to 13. And we're going to read two approaches. Many people have heard of this story but we're going to read two approaches and I'm going to read it and it says when he entered Capernaum a centurion came to him pleading with him Lord my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible agony I will come and heal him he told him Lord the centurion he told, he, he told him the centurion replied 
I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be cured. For I, for I too am a man under authority, having soldiers under my command. I say to this, go, and he goes, and to the another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. Hearing this, Jesus was amazed and said to, this, to, to those following him, I assure you, I have, not, I have not found anyone in Israel with so great a faith. Tell you that many will come from east and west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus told the centurion, go as you, as you have believed. Let it be done for you. And his servant was cured at that very moment. That's the first approach. Now we're going to see the second approach. And we're going to compare both approaches. The second approach is in Mark, Mark 2, 1 through 12. When you have it, you can say amen. Hallelujah. The first approach and the second approach. And, and they're very different. At the end, they have the same similarities. Yeah, they both get healed. But they're both different. And we're going we're gonna to explain it how. When he entered again to Capernaum... Again, after some days, it was reported that he was yet home. So many people gathered together that there was no more room, not even in the doorway. He was speaking the message to them. Then they came to him, bringing him paralytic, carried by four men. Since they were not able to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above where he was. And when, he, and when they had broken through, they lowered the mat on which the paralytic was lying. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the scribes were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does he speak, speak like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right away, Jesus understood in his spirit that they were thinking like this within themselves and said to them, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. But so you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He told the paralytic, I tell you, get up, pick up your mat, and go home. Immediately he got up, picked up the mat, went out in front of everyone. As a result, they were all astounded, gave glory to God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. So we have two approaches. One stood home. I think, I don't know if God is... It's, it's giving you that idea right now. I, I, I got it as well. When I first read this, I was like, this is powerful. One stood at home and made the centurion do, do what he had to do. One stood at home and, 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 and told the centurion and, and, and made the centurion do what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to come to Jesus and, and demonstrate his faith so he can be healed. But he didn't. He stayed at home. God healed the servant because the centurion's faith was so big. He healed him because of that. But this second approach, we can see how he has obstacles to come to Jesus. But it doesn't matter for this person. It doesn't matter for that person. Because even if the doorway is, is, is locked with people, even if the doorway is full of people, he comes to the roof. He finds another way to come to Jesus. So we have two approaches here. One stays at home. Sometimes we get tired, we stay at home. Sometimes we have problems and that's why we stay home. And we tell, you know what mom, what, in the service of, 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 of prayer on, on Tuesdays, maybe we tell our mom, hey mom, why don't you pray for me because I'm having some situations, I don't want to go to church. So your mom does the work you're supposed to do. Your dad does the work you're supposed to do. But there's some that come, even if, they, even if they're sick, even if, if many situations are passing through their minds, they just pass through that obstacle, they just pass through those things they've been passing, and that's how you get cured. That's how you get cured. As we see in these two passages, there were two approaches. One didn't have faith, stayed home, and let the centurion go do what the servant had to do. While the other had faith and took the necessary risk he needed to take to receive healing. How can we apply this to our lives? 
Sometimes that we have problems or situations, we stay, we stay home thinking God will resolve them. Instead of coming to Jesus and having faith and knowing that He can resolve any situation. The disease of paralysis. That's one example of the disease of paralysis. That we stay at home. Lazy. Stay at home instead of coming to church. Or just coming to church for other reasons if it's not God. If you're coming to church because of friends, you are a paralytic. If you come into church because of your parents, you have a disease of paralytic. And let me tell you something, the healer is here tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The healer is here tonight. If you have a spirit of deafness, if you have a spirit of, of, of speechless, if you can't preach to your friends when they're, when they're necessary, when it's necessary, you have a disease. And right now, the one who cures the disease is here tonight. Oh, oh, that was powerful. Hallelujah. The one who cures is here tonight. The one who cures is here tonight. Hallelujah. Now we have to tell God tonight, God, transform me. Renew me, Jesus Christ. Oh, cure me from that disease that I've been having. Because that disease, hallelujah, it, it interrupts the relationship we have with God. And if we don't have a good relationship with God, we're not going anywhere. We're going to stay here. Oh, hallelujah. The fourth disease and the last disease. I'm not going to take much of your time. The disease of blindness. And this, this one is just amazing. The disease of blindness is when you have no spiritual vision. You can't see what God has prepared for this church and for his people. You see, you see things negatively. I was talking, uh, I told this to Brother Christian and Brother Josue, that because of us setting the example, youth in Philadelphia and youth in Queens are already starting English ministries. Uh, you can get them a round of applause. It's because we started it. We started it. Now let me ask you something. Are we going to be the first to quit? How does that look? If we, if we started it, if we gave examples to the other church and we're the first to quit. Some people said in the beginning they had no vision. When, when, when Brother Anthony said, oh, we're doing English ministries, some people said, well, it's not going to last three months. It's not going to last two months. The parents are going to start complaining because their sons are going too late at home. That's lack of vision. That's the disease of blindness. You don't have this issue. You can't see what God has for you. You can't see what God wants you to have. You can't see the bigger picture. You keep thinking small. You keep thinking uh, uh, negatively. So I want you to turn your Bibles to John 9, 1 through 11. And this is just powerful. This is powerful here in this place. Hallelujah. He is here. He's going to heal someone tonight. Yes. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. John 9, 1 through 11. I'm going to read it. And it says, As he was passing by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples questioned him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his disciples? Or, I'm sorry, this man or his parents? That he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered. This came about so that God's work might be, might be displayed in him. We must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming and when, when, and, and when no one can work, as long as I am in the world, I am light of the world. After he said these things, he spit on the ground, made some mud from the saliva, spread the mud, mud on his eyes. Go, he told them. Washed in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he left. Washed, came back seeing. His neighbors and those who formerly have, had seen him as a beggar said, Isn't this the man who sat begging? Some said, He's the one. No others were saying, but he looks like him. He kept saying, I am the one. Therefore they asked him, Then how were your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and told me, Go to the Siloam and wash. So when I went and washed, I received sight. 
sometimes, well, when I was reading this, I, I, was, I was asking God, why did you spit in mud and put it on his eyes? It's symbolism. What is mud? Mud is part of this world. Mud is part of this world. Mud, mud is the dirty things of this world. When we don't have vision, when we have the disease of blindness, that means we have been seeing the things we're not supposed to be seeing. We have the dirt of the world in our eyes. And that's preventing us from seeing spiritually. Sometimes when, when you think pervertedly or when you think things badly, that's because you have the disease of blindness. That's, what, that's why, that's because you have dirt from this world, the most disgusting things of this world in your eyes. Or if it's watching pornography or if, or if it's watching vanity or whatever it is. It's in your eyes. You can't see what God wants you to see. You have the dirt. I don't know if you're understanding me right now. The dirt from this world. The, the, the nasty things from this world. The disgusting things from this world. You have in your eyes. If you have lack of spiritual vision, that's why. Because you have dirt from this world. You have the most disgusting things from this world. That's why he got saliva and he put it in his, in his eyes. And he told them to go wash himself. Because he was seeing things that were unrighteous. He was seeing things. He was blinded because of this world. Because of seeing things from this world. Well let me tell you something. If you have something like that tonight. Here is the pool of Siloam. And God is telling you go wash yourself. From all unrighteousness. Go wash yourself. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We have those spirits. We have those diseases. Sometimes it's lacking. Sometimes it's lacking our spiritual. It's lacking our spiritual life. Let me tell you something. It's not only about receiving the Holy Ghost once and you think you're saved. No. It's not about that. Every time we go into the world, every time we face the world, that spirit goes down. The spirit starts wasting. You need to come to church to get a refill. You need to come to church to get a refill. Sometimes, and, and, and like I said in the beginning, these spiritual diseases, they, they're a barrier between the flowing of God's presence and you. When you can't feel anything in the presence of God, it's because you're sick. Oh, yes, Lord. It's because you're sick. You have a spiritual disease. If you've been watching things you're not supposed to have. And you're not supposed to be watching. Hallelujah. That's the spirit of blindness. If you can't see what God wants you to see. That's the spirit of blindness. If the pastor says, well, let's have another service on Sunday. You say, no, I don't like that. That's the spirit of blindness. When, when, when the pastor says, let's have two fastings for the youth a month, amen, yeah. for the month, and you say, no, I don't like that, I'm too tired, that's lack of vision, that's lack of vision, probably right now, this ministry looks kind of small, but I have vision, and I see this, oh, yes, Lord, you know what I see? I see a multitude of people coming out from the Spanish ministry. And I see another multitude of, of, of English people coming in this ministry. I don't know if you believe it. I don't know if you're sick. I don't know if you have a disease. But he is the one who cures. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here is Jesus. Here is the pool of Siloam. He's telling you to wash yourself from all unrighteousness. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. How can you cure this last disease? By cleansing your eyes from all unrighteousness things. But why seeing your eyes in the pool of Siloam? The pool of Siloam is here in the altar. God is telling you, if you've been watching things you're not supposed to be watching, if you have lack of vision, spiritually if you can't sometimes i was here in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fasting for 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 the leaders and, and brother now said he gave a testimony he said oh last sunday i saw the, the the angels of the lord come down from heaven and god poured down his glory that spiritual vision 
Some people don't see that. Some people, when people don't see the truth, when people still haven't had an experience with God yet, they are lacking vision. They're lacking spiritual vision. They have a disease. We have diseases, or if it's of blindness, or if it's of deafness, or if, it, or if it's of speechless, or if it's of paralysis, we have a disease, and we need to be cured tonight. We need to be cured. If we want this ministry to go far, we need to be cured tonight. We need to tell God, God, purify me. God, cleanse me. Cleanse my eyes. Oh, cure me, Jesus Christ, from any sickness, any disease. Lord, oh, I don't know if you're understanding this word. Jesus is here tonight. He's the one who cures. Hallelujah. We have a disease. We have something. When, when, when. When you don't feel anything in the presence of God, that's a disease. You need to find out what disease that is, and you need to be cured right now. You need to be cured right now. We can't be taking this English ministry as a joke. We can't be just playing church. Oh, no, we can't do that anymore. Oh, it doesn't matter if Brother Anthony is gone. It doesn't matter if, 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 if the pastor is not here. It doesn't matter if the leader of the youth is not here. Let me tell you something. Someone bigger than the leader of the youth is here. Someone bigger than Brother Anthony is here. Someone bigger than the pastor is here. And his name is Jesus. Oh, yes. It's for him. It's not for anybody else. It's for him that we have to give the honor. It's for him that we have to give the glory. It's not for anybody else. We have to stop playing things. We have to stop being disorderly. This is for God. We have to give it the best we have. We have to give it the best we have. And, and, and the ones who are sick will not go to heaven. The ones who are sick, because there are, no, there are no sick people in heaven. There are no sick people. You understanding this connection here? There are no sick people in heaven. So if you have a sickness or a spiritual disease right now, you need to present it to the Lord. You need to tell the Lord, I have a disease. I have something that's preventing me to move. When was the last time the Holy Ghost was poured down in this place? When was the last time you received the Holy Ghost? When was the last time? Is it because of a disease? Is it because of a spiritual sickness that you haven't felt anything in the Lord? That you, have, you haven't read the Bible? That you haven't prayed? That you haven't felt anything in the presence of the Lord? Is it a sickness? Is it a disease? Well, you need to come to Jesus tonight. You need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, you need to cure me right now. You need to renew me, Jesus Christ. Anything that, 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 that you don't like of me, Lord, oh, please change it tonight. We need to keep advancing. We need to keep advancing. We need to keep moving forward. We can't stay in the same spot. We can't stay going in circles. No, we need to be cured today from that disease that we have that's preventing us from moving forward. Why? Let me ask you something. Why is it the same people preaching all the time? Why is it the same people leading all the time? Why is the same people uh, praying all the time? No, we need new people. We need people to raise right now. I don't know if it's a disease, but right now that's going to change in the name of Jesus. I don't know if that's a disease. I don't know if that's a sickness. But that's going to change in the name of Jesus. Right now, get on your feet. Oh, there's something amazing is going to happen tonight. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to lift your hands right now. Oh, we have something. We have something that God doesn't like. We have something, something that's preventing us. I don't know if it's when we got, when we went into school. I don't know if it was that social oppression, that social tolerance. I don't know what it was that we stopped reading the Bible. We stopped praying. I don't know what it was, but we've changed. What happened to the youth that was in the summer? What happened to the youth that was so joyful in the summer? Have we changed? Have we changed with the things of God? No, it doesn't matter if I have school. It doesn't matter if I have work. I will still praise the Lord. I will still give glory what He needs. Oh, if you have a social disease, if you have a disease tonight, come to the altar. Oh, the pool of Siloam is here so you can cleanse your eyes from all unrighteousness. It is here. Hallelujah. Oh, 
yes, the, oh yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus is here tonight, the one who cures, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We know you are here right now in this moment, Jesus Christ. Oh, bring a spirit of healing right now. Just form these lives. We need to advance in this in the English ministry. Hallelujah. We need to keep going forward. We have to stop getting stuck. We have to stop playing church. We have to stop playing with the stuff of God. This is serious. This is involving your salvation. Oh, like I told you in the beginning, what if God comes for his people tonight? Will you be with him? Think of that. Think of that. Will you be, be, will you be righteous? Will you be righteous in front of God's eyes? Is there something God doesn't like about you? Is it something God doesn't need? Is it something, hallelujah, is it a disease? If it's a disease of blindness, if it's a disease of paralysis, if it's a disease of deafness, if it's a civil disease, hallelujah. Oh, speechless. If you're afraid to speak to your friends, if you're afraid to speak to your friends about God, you have a disease. If you're afraid, oh, if, if, if you don't want to come to church, if you're being lazy to come to church, if you only come, oh, two days a, a week, you're being lazy, you have a spirit of pluralism. God needs to cure that right now. God needs to do something about that right now. If you've changed, if you're not the same you were a few weeks ago, God needs to change that right now. God needs to cure you right now. Oh, if you're being, oh, hallelujah, if you can't see the thing God has for you, if you've been seeing the things, oh, if you've been seeing the things that God doesn't want you to see, you have the spirit, you have the disease of blindness, if you can't see what God has 